Houdé Nation, we are in a sub battle once again with our Steelers channel. We did a great job last month in June. We were able to hunt them down and beat them in the June sub battle. But it's a new month, and as you can tell, we have fallen behind early. But good news, last time we did this, we got 130 subscribers in one video. So if we can do that again, we're going to be right back in this race. So do us a favor, hit that sub button, youtube.com slash Bengals TV. Bengals fans, what's going on? Stone Shields on hand once again for another edition of Bengals Breakdown. And it is official. I am now the full-time host of Bengals Breakdown. So super excited to be on this journey with you all. And without further ado, let's get it going on today's show. So Joe Burrow the other day talked with some folks over at Complex Sports. And anytime Joe Burrow talks, we also talk. And we got to dive into what exactly he said. So he was kind of looking at, you know, obviously his injury history and kind of the outlook for the 2024 season. So let's take a look at what Burrow said. He said, well, number one, I want to be on the field for all the games. I know I'm going to play well when I'm out there. I'm at that point in my career where I've seen enough to know myself that I can go out there and play as well as anybody in the game. The biggest strides this year are going to be my body and learning how to get through the season, get through practices with my body and feeling in tip-top shape. And so that's the main focus for the offseason. All right, so obviously it's been well documented. Joe Burrow and his injury history, taking a look here at all the injuries he has suffered in his short NFL career. But look, it could be a lot worse, right? Number one, the team could just not be any good. And you'd be looking at a team that would go out on the football field and just didn't really have a chance. But with the Bengals, you always feel like you have a chance when he's out there. Everyone's just kind of holding their collective breath when he takes the field because at this point, it looks like he is whatever prone to injuries, taking a look at some of the things he's done. And obviously, the two years that he played the entire season, outstanding years for the Cincinnati Bengals, going to a Super Bowl and going to an AFC championship game. Now, here's some of the numbers through Joe Burrow's career, but really, it's not the numbers that uh, get me fired up, right? It's not the numbers that make him great. The things that make Joe Burrow so great are what he's able to do on third down, what he's able to do on fourth down, all right? What he's able to do in the fourth quarter in overtime when the game is on the line. That's what sets him apart because he can just play at such a high level in those big time moments. And that's the reason why I and everyone else in this city love Joe Burrow and love the fact he is the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. So obviously he's coming off injury again this year. So it got me thinking about what the comeback player of the year odds look like in the NFL. And here we go. You got Joe Burrow at the number two spot at plus 210. Odds. Now, look, let's be honest. If the Jets make the playoffs, I think Aaron Rodgers is probably going to get this award, right? Um, you know, 40 years old, one of the game's all-time greats, tears his Achilles, comes back. If they go to the playoffs, it's probably his award to lose. But uh, got a lot of value at Burrow at that plus 210 spot. And a little interesting tidbit, obviously Burrow won the rookie of the year, the year the Bengals went to the Super Bowl. And there's only been one other player in the history of the game that has won that award twice. So he'd be in pretty rare company if he could secure the comeback player of the award again in 2024. So your chance to get interactive in the comments with the pinned comment of today's video. Will you, uh, do you think Joe Burrow will win the comeback player of the year award? Type Y for yes, type N for no. If that ad comes here on YouTube, that's fine. Take advantage of it and go vote on the pinned comment down below. All right, moving on here. So Bleacher Report listed 10 free agents who could still help teams and suggested Carl Lawson to Cincinnati. You might be thinking, oh, Carl Lawson, that sounds familiar. Well, of course, he spent his forced, uh, first four years of his NFL career with the Cincinnati Bengals and had a pretty solid run. You know, there were talks about potentially getting him a long-term contract. Didn't happen. He went, to, you know, well, went through with free agency and became a New York Jet. But here's exactly what Bleacher Report had to say on Carl Lawson. They said Carl Lawson should be available at a cap-friendly price point after barely seeing the field with the New York Jets in 2023. After missing the 2021 season with a torn Achilles and then rebounding in 2022, Lawson played only 24% of the Jets' defensive snaps in the six games in which he appeared last season. A return to the Cincinnati Bengals, who originally drafted Lawson with a fourth-round pick in 2017, would be logical. The Bengals have one standout edge rusher in Trey Hendrickson, but no one else on the roster had more than six sacks last season. Look, 
good, cheap pass rushers are hard to find, right? When you look at the positions that are getting paid the most in the NFL these days, it's quarterback, receiver, and edge rusher. So if you can find one that's good and that's cheap, you're in a good spot. But the question is, do you think Carl Lawson is still a good edge rusher? Um, and also another question I have is how do you think he would feel as a backup? Because this is a guy that went on record saying, I'm a football player, not a cheerleader. All right, so there could be some issues there if he wasn't out on the field all the time if he were to come back to the Cincinnati Bengals. And I can tell you that he probably wouldn't be on the field that much, and it certainly would be a reserve role because the guys ahead of him are so good in Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard. And what's ironic is when the Bengals let Lawson go and uh, explore free agency a couple of years ago, that's the year they brought in Trey Hendrickson. So obviously that has been a complete and utter home run for the Cincinnati Bengals, and he has really manned that position over the past few years. But taking a look at some of Carl Lawson's numbers over the past few years, like we talked about, really didn't do much last year, did not get much playing time at all. Had a really good 2022 year, which certainly um, you know, gives you a sign or an indication that he could perhaps still play. I believe he's only 29 years of age, so he's still got some time left in the league for sure but had that major injury that cost him his entire 21, 2021 season. And then before that, you remember him working out his rookie contract with the Cincinnati Bengals the first four years of his career. So once again, your chance to get interactive in the comments. Would you sign Carl Lawson? Type S if you would sign him, or type P if you would pass on signing him. I personally would pass on uh, signing Carl Lawson. A couple of reasons why. Um, I think letting him go in free agency worked out the last time, right? You got Trey Hendrickson, Carl Lawson went on to play for the New York Jets, and it really hasn't panned out for him. Obviously, he's gotten injured, and that's unfortunate, but really, you know, you did the right thing several years ago when you let him go and got Trey Hendrickson. And also, it's way too early to bail on Miles Murphy, right? I've gotten some, uh, you know, criticism on how I've talked about Miles Murphy. Look, I understand he wasn't brought in to play immediately, right? I get that. And, um, you know, that wasn't the intent for the Bengals staff last year. But I think this year his role gets a lot bigger, and you want to see if he can play. And you allocated a first-round pick on him, so I want to go out there and see if he can play. So I'll get him in the lineup, get Joseph Osai out there as well. And because of that, I believe that I would stay away from signing Carl Lawson because I think you got some guys that can go out there and play in terms of the defensive line for the Cincinnati Bengals. Give a little quick shout out to our friends at Fanatics. Amarius Mims jerseys are available now. Get you your Amarius Mims jerseys uh, over at chatsports.com slash Amarius Mims. Uh, that link will be in the comments and the description of today's video. So make sure you check out those Amarius Mims jerseys and get you some swag to get ready for the 2024 NFL season. All right, our last topic of the day is on Bengals center Ted Karras. So CBS Sports ranked interior offensive linemen and slated Ted Karras as their number five center. And we talked about last week how the Bengals um, you know, kind of got slammed by PFF and were ranked outside the top 20, but this certainly is promising that their center is viewed as one of the best in the game. Taking a look at the top five rankings right here, obviously no Jason Kelsey as he has retired. But you look at those uh, four guys ahead of Ted Karras, those are the game's best, right? Creed Humphrey, he's been a really big part of Kansas City's success. Um, Ryan Kelly for the Colts, just solid. Linderbaum, who the Ravens added a couple years ago in the draft. And you got Ted Karras up there at that five spot. And he's really in elite company for Cincinnati, and that's certainly promising uh, for Ted Karras. And it shows you why the Bengals went out and extended him this offseason, got him some money, locked him up. For a couple of more years in Cincinnati. I think everybody should be fired up about it. Obviously, the offensive line has gotten some hate, uh, as they should, right? They haven't played up to standards. The, you know, the front office allocated resources towards that room, and it really hasn't panned out. Things have not gotten better for Cincinnati, but this year is certainly going to be uh, Joe Burrow's best offensive line that he's ever had in his career. And I think that starts and ends right there with the guy in the middle, Ted Karras. And um, certainly people should be very excited about that. And we'll see how the guys around him fare out going uh, into training camp. And this year we got perhaps some position battles on that offensive line that we can talk more about as training camp gets underway. 
but certainly feel very comfortable with Ted Karras manning that spot as CBS Sports has him as a top five center in the game. I want to remind everyone before we get out of here to subscribe to our channel. We talked to you about that Steelers channel sub battle that we got going on so we want to take those Steelers down and more importantly than anything we just want to expand our channel here as we get closer to training camp and then closer to the preseason and then closer to the regular season so make sure you hit that sub button so you get all the best Bengals coverage here at chat sports that is youtube.com slash Bengals TV